everyone, my name is Philomena and I'm from a community organisation called Bread and Butter. We are based in Barnet, which is in North London. And what we do is we teach the community how to cook healthy meals. We go into schools, into community centres. We also do um, courses about healthy living, how to be healthy in what you eat and how to um, increase your well-being. So today I am going to show you how to cook um, a very easy, very nutritious and filling meal. It's also very economical and I would kind of tell you along the way um, other hacks that you can um, kind of um, put into this that will make it even cheaper as well. So um, I trust you have everything you need. So I've got all my ingredients here. So I will talk to you um, face to face and then I'll move my camera so then you can actually see me chopping and cooking and then you can follow um, as well. Obviously, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will try and answer them either during or at the end of the session. But yeah, please feel free to um, obviously, you know, interject with any questions. Hello, Irene. Um, so the meal is obviously um, meal um, chicken. So we're using chicken thighs. Chicken thighs are cheaper than using chicken breasts. Also, I think they taste better as well. They're tastier. Um, so I have my chicken thighs here just to show you. Um, I actually got them with no skin on, but it's up to you whether you um, have the skin on. Obviously, if you have the skin on, it's a little bit fattier. Um, and so it's a bit healthier if you remove the skin, but totally up to you and whatever you, you find in the supermarket. You can use frozen chicken for this. And if you do choose that option, you can cook it straight from frozen. It is cheaper to buy frozen chicken. Um, the other tip I would give you also is that if you buy, even if you live on your own, if you buy the bigger trays of chicken thighs and sometimes you get chicken legs as well and then just portion that up and put them in your freezer, it's much cheaper than just buying like a single chicken thigh and chicken leg. Um, so that's just a little uh, tip for you to reduce your food costs because obviously as we know food at the moment is very expensive. Every time I go to the supermarket it just increases and increases. Um, Obviously, if you have a local butcher, even better, because then um, you can have a chat to them about what kind of joints to use, what cuts to use of meat, and which ones are cheaper. So, yes, please um, use your local butcher if you do have one. So, um, I trust you will have the recipe. This is the recipe. Okay, so I'm going, the first thing you need to do is fry your, um, I'm just going to move my camera so you can see my cooking pot, is fry off your chicken. Now, you don't need to um, wash chicken. I know in, in, the, in the olden days, um, we were told that we had to um, wash meat, but you don't need to do that because also the other thing, if you do wash it, it can spread bacteria around your utensils and your cooking area. So um, best not to, to wash it. So what you need to do, let me just put my hob on. So you need a pot like this, you can use anything like a deep frying pan, um, one of the cast iron pots, you can use, a, or just a deep um, saucepan like this. Um, so you don't need to cut your chicken because you're just putting the chicken thighs in whole. You can use chicken legs as well if you prefer. I wouldn't use chicken breast because that will just turn out really dry um, for this dish, so don't use chicken breast. Okay, so. First things first is turn your hob on, put your pan on the hob, add a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil, you can use vegetable oil, any oil is fine, just a drizzle. And what you want to do is then, just getting my chicken, is just fry the chicken thighs. Let me just show you my chicken thigh, there you go. So it's still got the bone in. You can get the ones without the bone in. Um, I just think with the bone in, it does taste nice, nicer. So just lay your chicken thighs in the pan. So you want to put your hob on a medium heat, so not too high, not too low. We don't want it to burn. Just going to wash my hands. And just uh, let them cook. A little bit high. You just want them to kind of brown gently. So 
while we do that, while the chicken is cooking, we can prepare our vegetables. So I'm just going to move the hob to here. You don't need to see that anymore. So um, with this, you can really use any vegetables with this dish. Um, you can use tinned vegetables as well. Obviously, they're cheaper than using fresh sometimes. Actually, sometimes they can be a bit more expensive. So just have a look and really compare the prices. Um, obviously, frozen veg is fine too. Um, so you could put peas in this. You could even put frozen beans. I'm using fresh beans. So these fresh beans like this. So I've got potatoes. Um, I've got beans and carrots, an onion, some garlic, and I've also got a leek. I just thought I'd add that in. But you could shoot, you could put things like um, sweet parsnip, which are in season and, they, and they're very cheap as well. You could also put in things like butternut squash, which you can also get frozen, um, courgette. So anything that you've got even lying around in the fridge, little odds and sods vegetables that you need to use up. Celery would work. So anything like that. So just keep an eye on the chicken while you're preparing your vegetables. I'm just going to turn mine over. So first things first, so all you do is prepare your vegetables and then you just add it to the chicken once it's cooked. So I'm going to actually do the beans first. So with the beans, you just, I mean, mine have kind of the stem on the top, so you just need to cut that off. Yours might not, depending on where you bought them. You just need to trim them. I've washed all of these already, so they're fine. Obviously, if you're using frozen ones, you don't need to do any of this. So you literally just put what you need in the dish. Um, and I would say if you're using frozen, I would reduce the cooking time because obviously with frozen vegetables, they can get quite soggy and mushy, so we don't want that. Um, and there is a myth that frozen vegetables aren't as nutritious as fresh, which is not true, because what happens is they're picked, um, they're frozen straight um, away as soon as they're picked. They retain all their nutrients. Um, and also with frozen, I think sometimes it's better because you can just buy a bag, put it in your freezer, and then just use what you need as you go, rather than having to rely on fresh all the time. Um, and at the moment here in London, there we have seen a shortage of certain vegetables in the supermarket. I'm not sure why, different theories about that. So I've just prepared those. You can cut them in half as well if you want. So I'm going to do that, literally just bunch them together. And cut them in half. So that's that. Then I've got carrots. So I'm not going to peel my carrots because, or my potatoes, because if you don't peel your vegetables, it means that you have extra, I'm just going to turn my chicken, extra fibre um, on the vegetables. If it's sticking, just reduce the heat. So with the carrots, just top and tail. Just gonna give those a wash. Obviously, if you want to peel yours, please, Go ahead and do them. I'm just cutting them lengthways and then in the middle. So you kind of want smallish chunks. Obviously, it depends how big your carrots are. Mine are medium sized, I would say. But this is the kind of um, size. Could also use mushrooms in this, that would work quite well as well. Um, so 
extra. Yeah, it really just depends on your own personal preference what vegetables you put in. Let me just check if there are any questions. If you find it difficult to chop hard vegetables like um, carrots or potatoes, then I would say use tinned because then you don't need to chop any. Or actually, um, you can get frozen carrots as well sometimes. So yeah, so th those are options for anybody that finds it difficult um, or has mobility um, issues with their hands. So I'm just cutting my onion. Just chop and tail it. In the middle. You can even buy actually um, chopped onion and chopped garlic in some supermarkets in the freezer aisle. So, yeah, it does work out a little bit more expensive, but like I said, if you have um, issues with using a knife, for example, I've got um, a lady that comes to my classes and she has arthritis. Um, in her hands, she finds it really difficult to um, use a knife um, and chop hard vegetables, especially things like butternut squash. I mean, I find it difficult to chop butternut squash. Um, so yeah, you can buy it um, already chopped in the salad section, in like the little plastic containers, or you can get butternut squash, which is frozen. And that's sometimes a nice alternative to use instead of potato um, if you're looking to kind of reduce your carb intake. So let me just check the chicken. Yeah, that looks good. Like I said, you just want it to kind of brown off. Let me just show you the color of mine. So that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to take that off the heat now. And I'm just putting it in a plate. So I've take, take, removed it off the heat, turned the heat off, and I'm putting it in a plate just to the side until the vegetables are ready. So with the onion, you can just um, slice it thinly. So what I normally do is um, do a bridge over it like this and, and so it's easy for you not to cut your fingers. This is a good method to show children actually. Also um, make sure your fingers aren't close to the knife. But if you don't like slices you can do chunks however. And if you don't like onion, if it's too strong for you, you can use um, spring onion, which has a delicate, a more delicate um, flavour. That would work too. Or if you don't like onion, you don't have to put it in. It just gives it a nice flavour. I would say just make sure your knife um, is very sharp because it is safer to use a sharper knife. Just makes life a little bit easier okay so i'm just going to add my vegetables as i go to my pan the pan is off it's just to get them out of the way off the chopping board and the beauty of this is you don't have to fry things off in sections you literally just throw so look i just put them in there you throw everything into the same cooking pot that you put the chicken in so less washing up um, so that's a, a good thing, saves on time. Um, you could also cook this in a slow cooker if you have one. Obviously, slow cookers are brilliant because they um, cook things slowly <laughs> and they use very less, um, they use a lot of, uh, sorry, gosh, they use less energy than conventional cooking on a hot. So what you would do is just brown the chicken off, put it in the slow cooker and then throw all the other ingredients on top. 
and then just leave it to cook for either four hours or six hours depending on the settings of your slow cooker. Um, right, I'm going to also use a leek just because they had them um, in the supermarket, they were reduced, so I thought, why not? So I'm going to top and tail it. Now leeks have lots of generally soil trapped in the leaves um, deep down inside. So normally I would, what I normally do is cut it in the middle like this, and then just wash it and just fan the leaves as I wash it so that the mud, can you see, see there's lots of earth there, um, so the mud comes out. And then I'm literally just going to chop it. If you're still not sure if all the earth uh, has come out, all the mud has come out, then what I normally do is just put it, um, the chopped leek in a colander and then give it another rinse under a cold tap. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit stubborn. Um, first rinse. Nobody wants gritty mud in their food, so yeah, that's too good. But the beauty of this dish is you can chop and change depending on what vegetables you like. Um, you can also make it vegetarian by maybe using beans like butter beans or um, white beans like cannellini beans, chickpeas. Uh, you could also reduce the meat, the amount of meat that you use and add a tin of beans, like I've suggested. Um, that makes it cheaper, but it's still filling because you're still getting the protein from the beans. So that's another alternative to reduce your costs. So right, in that goes to the pot as well. So I've now got my potatoes. So I am just going to wash these and leave the skin on, but if you would like to, you can peel yours and I'll just show you how to chop. So as a nation, we do not get enough fibre. We're supposed to get um, 30 grams of fibre a day, um, and we don't achieve that in this country. So leaving skins on vegetables such as carrots and you know potatoes um, and fruit as well, you shouldn't peel your fruit, is a, just a really easy way to just boost that fibre intake. Um, and we need fibre to keep our guts healthy, to stop things like bowel cancer, and also to um, protect our heart. So fiber is really important in reducing cholesterol levels and keeping our heart healthy. So I'm just cutting them into chunks like this and adding them to the pot. So you can use any type of potatoes. Um, work well in this dish, you don't have to buy a specific variety. If you want, you could use sweet potato as well. So at this point, um, I would boil your water for the stock. So you need 400 mils. So 400 mils of water to make your stock. I'm using chicken stock. You can use chicken or vegetable, whatever you have to hand. Okay. So 
what else do I need to chop? Okay, the garlic. Again, if you don't like garlic, you don't have to add it, but um, I love garlic, so I'm adding two cloves. So top and tail it, and then just take the skin off. And garlic also is really good for um, heart health and reducing cholesterol. So if anyone has those conditions, then up your garlic intake. So in terms of herbs to use for this dish, you can use any dried herbs um, that you have. Um, I'm using oregano, but you can literally you buy just um, a pot of dried herbs in the supermarket. Um, you can use fresh if you have any, if you have any growing on your windowsill or your in your gardens. So I'm just chopping the garlic first in the middle and then just like that. So you could use rosemary or thyme. Um, that would work as well. Parsley would work too. So I'm just then chopping it up a little bit finely so you don't have big chunks of garlic and it kind of melts into the dish that way as well. into the pot as well so that's all the ingredients in so let me just put the kettle on and move that out of the way okay so here's my pot of vegetables i'm just going to give those a stir and add a little bit more oil because obviously the chicken would have soaked it up so just a glug just check there's no questions. Hello everyone, thanks for joining today. So I'm just giving that a mix just to make sure that everything's mixed through. And even if you live on your own and you make this, which is, is for a family of four, you can just batch cook it. So make a big portion, so make this portion up and then um, either freeze it into individual portions or keep it in the fridge and then warm it up, warm it through in the microwave. So again, you're, you're reducing those um, energy um, costs for cooking it. So then what you need to do is just get your chicken thighs and nestle them into the vegetables. Put some of the vegetables on the top as well. Underneath. Don't be scared to use your hands. <laughs> you see, just make sure when you're handing meat to oh, it's just been on the floor to um to wash them. So that's that. Let me just show you the stock. So a tip for, this is off by the way, a tip for um, using stock. I normally crumble the stock cube um, in before I add the water because in that way it just dissolves um, easier. So I'm going to add the water. If you feel like you need to add more liquid, then yeah, you can do. That's not a problem. Um, so just to show you, I'm just 
just give it a stir to make sure that it's all dissolved. So if you were making this for vegetarians, you would use obviously vegetable stock, not chicken stock. And you could use things like soy mints, corn mints, corn chunks instead um, too. But by adding beans, chickpeas or lentils, you're also increasing your fibre. So that's another way. And it's, they're cheap, they're so cheap as well, tinned variety in the supermarkets. Okay, that seems all dissolved. So I'm going to put my pot back on my hob and I'm going to season it now. So here's the oregano. So just a teaspoon of that. Just sprinkle that on top, all over. And then salt and pepper. So nice grinding of pepper. And where's my salt? And the salt. Obviously, if you're watching your salt intake, if you have high blood pressure, then reduce the salt. Um, and then you literally just pour the stock over everything. I'm just going to scrape a little bit of stock at the bottom. Okay, that is it. Then you put the lid on and you cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes um, and that's it really there's nothing else to it any questions Okay, lovely. So yeah, to keep it on a low um, to moderate heat, check it, give it a stir. Um, but once it's cooked, um, to check the, if the chicken's cooked, put your fork through the chicken. And if the juices run clear, then that means it's cooked. I think we're done. Um, also, one last thing to serve this, you could serve this with rice, you could serve this with some crusty bread, um, or just have it on its own because you do have the potato in there, so you have got some carbohydrates. But it's a great dish, it's packed full of protein, lots of vegetables, um, and yeah, it's, it's very healthy too. Can you cook on hob and in the oven? Yes, you can. You can. Um, obviously, I'm mindful of using the oven just because it costs more money to heat an oven rather than using the hob. Um, what I would say is to reduce your energy costs when using the oven is cook lots of things in the oven rather than just having it um, on just for one thing. But yes, you could cook this in the oven um, for sure. Just make sure that your pot is oven proof. So I wouldn't be able to use this because as you can see, it's got plastic handles. So I'd have to use like a Pyrex dish or something like that. You could also have um, lamb with this or beef, stewing beef, um, something like lamb shoulder. Um, but obviously, lamb is a little bit um, is expensive, but yeah, beef would work too um, with this. Any other questions? I mean, if you do have any other questions, if you just put them, is it the same time for cooking? So I would say if you're cooking it in the oven, it will probably be, cook it depends if you slow cook it. So you could cook it on for 150 for about 40 minutes. Um, I think that would be fine. So yeah, less longer for lower heat. But I think this it would be good in a slow cooker. It would work really well too. Any other questions? If you do have any other questions, you can post them in the, the um, Facebook group and I can answer them um, if you think of anything else after. Okay, I think we are done.
yes, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, Bread and Butter CIC. Um, we have lots of recipes as well on our website and on our Instagram pages that you can and you can see what we're up to as well in the community. Thanks very much for everyone that's joined us live. And I hope you found this useful and I hope you enjoy this dish if you are making it um, alongside me today or if you'd like to make it another time, now you know how to make it. Thanks very much, everyone. <laughs>